here in second service. That's awesome. I'm good. Thanks for asking. All right. So we had an awesome busy week this week with VBS, um, Sunday through Wednesday. It was amazing. We had over 100 kids each night. It's crazy, busy, a little insane, but no kids broke any bones or died, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I know, right? not high expectations. Okay, this Sunday tonight, 7 o'clock, um, we're doing the first Sunday of the month prayer night, so if you're interested, come on out. And there's also um, the back to school bash in the bulletin on the 17th. It's just going to be so much fun. We're going to have food and games and face painting and snow cones and just one last hurrah before sending the kids off to school again. Yay! All right, and on the 24th, um, Trish is doing kind of a debriefing, so if anyone helped out with VBS and uh, kind of wants to know the ins and outs and how it went, you can come to that debriefing. I'm not sure what all she has scheduled for that, but um, yeah, come on out. And if you guys see Trish or Ronica this week 
or see anybody wearing those awesome, bright VBS shirts that uh, anybody that helped out with that, just tell them thank you. John, you know, all the crew leaders, everybody that had a hand in it, it was amazing. So tell them thank you. Tell them great job. No one is listening today. Man, I'm losing you. <sighs> Anyways, and today, Trish said today, I told first service this week, but Trish said today, if you are interested in ordering those shirts, um, give her your order today. You can order them in regular t-shirt material for $6 or the sporty material for 8 if you're interested. And you can pick out whatever color you want. And also, um, since it is the first Sunday in August, we have the new August newsletter for the RSC kids out. You can pick it up um, in the foyer if you have children in our church and you want to know what's going on. You sure can. You, you or Yes, you can order whatever size you need. They're actually, they run quite large, fair warning. I, yeah, they're huge. I looked like I was wearing a circus tent all week, but, you know, it's cool. Yeah, you're pregnant. Good morning, everybody. Did you guys even hear the announcements? I think, I think there's a few people. Uh, but, yeah, those shirts run in all sizes. Um, I'm pretty sure. I think so. What do they look like? It's looking pretty hot in his orange. You say model it? Come on, Dave. Do the catwalk walk. You can start from back there and just... That was... That was just awkward. That was awkward. I don't know what to think about that. That's just weird. Um, we we have more than just orange, too. But uh, other note, for youth, if you have any teenagers, um, <laughs> he's laughing. Two weeks from now, we are going to Kings Island. Um, that's our last event for the summer. But for that event, it is not on Tuesday. It is on a Monday, August 11th. So, Look for the details in your bulletin, all of the, pr the pricing, times, all that stuff is in your bulletin. If you need to ask me any other questions, please ask me. And then um, for this week of fair, we're also doing a scavenger hunt on Wednesday night at 9 o'clock out there. So those are the two things for youth. Um, and then uh, for the CD that I have this week, because um, I give one every week for the whole summer, uh, Sean McDonald, um, awesome, awesome guy. But there's a sticker in a green bulletin. Um, somebody has it, I think. I don't know who has it inside of your bullet. You've got it. Okay, so I'll give it to you. It's green on green. That's what it was. Good thing you're not colorblind. That would have been bad news. Um, but let me pray for us, and we'll take up our offering. Um, Lord, thank you for a great day once again. Um, I know I'm so much more awake than I was this morning, and I, I pray that we all are. I pray that we're we're attentive to your word, that we're open um, to what you have to say, that your Holy Spirit is in this place moving through us and in us, and, and then as we leave this place, your Holy Spirit's flowing out and touching lives. Please, Lord, let your spirit um, be visible in every single way. In this offering, it goes to you too. In your name we pray, amen. <laughs>
for me. I know who stands behind the God of angel armies. He is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. I know who goes before me. It's good to be here and worshiping the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father, this morning. Even if I ran away, your love never fails. I know I still make mistakes, but you have your mercies for me every day. Your love never fails.
Praise you, Lord. You are the King of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift you up. King of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Lord, we stand with arms high. We just want to lift you up, Father, for the goodness that you have put upon us, Lord. And just give you thanks for your love every day, Lord. Lord, we praise you. Accept our praise this morning. Lord, just bless the word this morning. Speak to our hearts to guide us through our week, Lord. We love you and praise you. Amen. All right, good morning, good to see you. Not bad for a fair crowd, right? Right, we'll be praying. Well, I don't, I shouldn't, I'm, Lord, forgive me for even my thought. I'm not, I'm not a big fair person, but we have been in the years gone by. Uh, my wife's been an animal lover, and of course she got her kids in animals, and we had all our kids all those years in the fair. And then we got our boys a few years ago into woodworking and had their stuff in the fair. But this year, <laughs> anyhow, good morning. Glad to see you. Thanks for coming. My wife took third uh, with her little tomatoes. Um, she bought them at Kroger's right before she took, no, I, <laughs> no, 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 she didn't. She said she put them on a blue plate. Her boss teased her and said there was only three entries and she got third. But she counted and said there were 17, so... Third out, I put her higher than third out of 17. But you know the current girl, I think it's Laura. I get them all mixed, confused. The current girl won the one, not only the sewing thing for the, at the fair, but also the modeling thing. So we have Urbana's top model here in our church. Did you know that? Or, or Urbana, Champaign County's top model. I guess that's bigger, Champaign County's top model. So she did real good. And I don't know about what everybody else is doing. Uh, but I'm sure it's good because we got the best kids out there and, and all that. We also, if you, I don't know how to explain this to you. We've got some people out there from our church at Boos. So just eat everywhere until you find a church person, right? Yeah or not? There's a, I don't know how to explain this to you. I, I just won't. It's too hard, too complicated. But the, the LifeNet church, the church across town that is kind of our sister church, is taking over the cable Methodist Bob Evans booth starting next year. All right. So if you're looking for Chris in there, he won't be in there tomorrow, but looking in there, Chris is going to be taking that. What's funny is his parents ran a booth in the Clark County Fair for years and years and years and years, and uh, so he's going to have a booth for the next few years up here. Anyhow, it's perfect. Chris making sausage gravy, and <laughs> that's yeah. perfect. Just fits him perfect. Do you know what I mean? So... And then I think uh, Gary Clark, he's always on that pork council. So he, they, he'll make you a big old pork sandwich that is just, am I getting you hungry? Yeah. Sorry about that. For a little while today out here in the cafe, for a little while today they had Burger King sandwiches. Did anybody catch that? 
Yeah, that'll get you here earlier, won't it? <laughs> yeah, Burger King sandwiches out there. Yeah, we're glad you come. My daughter and daughter from Peru comes in next Sunday. She'll be home for about a month. We're really excited. Connor, our 14-year-old, has been there for about six weeks. Cut himself playing soccer this week, 10 stitches. That's okay. He hadn't been a very good son. <laughs> he hadn't really talked to us much while we've been gone. We've been trying to call and talk to him. He's like, hey, I'm fine, and leaves. I'm like, Lord, get him. So stitches. <laughs> he shakes when he gets real scared. He's just... I shouldn't tell private things about my kids, but who cares? Anyhow, he gets real shaky when he gets real scared. Anyhow, he got, had to get these stitches, and Maggie said he was just shaking. And I thought, well, maybe he'll call his mom and dad. Nope. nope. <laughs> he didn't. So we're moving all this stuff out this week. <laughs> when he gets home, nothing there anymore. He's not coming home to a bedroom or anything. He'll have to earn that back. We got some cows out back. We'll start him back with the cows. And bring him in slow, I guess. So, I'm glad you're here this morning. Thanks for coming. Thank you for coming on a fair day. I appreciate that. Normally, this is our worst attended Sunday, so I don't know if that's true, but glad for you today. Thank you for coming. I'm going to preach my heart out anyhow, okay? Is that okay with everybody? Hope someone thank Tom for all the sweet corn he brought Wednesday. Uh, is that still good out there if it's out there on the table now? Yeah? Hey, take it home, try it, okay? Let me know. But I ate, I bet I ate more sweet corn this week because there was a whole bunch here. It was here, it came on Wednesday and then it was here on Thursday. So I got some Wednesday and I got some Thursday. Then I got some Friday. Then I was a little bit worried about it, so I didn't. But I ate a bunch of sweet corn. Yes, sir. I, he left sweet corn weeks before that. I didn't say thanks for that, but thank you for that too. You guys like that when he does that, don't you? Isn't that appreciated very much? And then our man, our big man, our trampoline man back there. He's finally back with us. He cannot do a, two backflips off the wall or something. What were you trying, Grant? What were you trying to get? Backflip off the wall? You'll never try that again, will you? Good for you. Good answer. So our, our, our young guy named Grant that broke his leg real bad is back with us in a wheelchair today. He has a high... He broke both bones in this leg, left leg. Broke broke bone broke bone bone broke both bones in in this leg, yeah. one high and one low. So we've been praying for him and hope he's getting better. I think he is. He's got a cast from way down there all the way up here, and when our next prayer is that he gets better, where you can just get a cast just to above your knee or below your knee. Below, okay, that he can get into that cast and. Is that hot and sweaty, that cast? Have you tried a coat hanger down in it yet? <laughs> they say don't do that, but... Helps what? It helps you itch. It helps you itch, doesn't it? You ever had a cast in the summer? I'm getting way off the topic here, but... Ever had a cast in the summer? What are you doing here, man? Good to see you. Stranger? Anyhow, cast in the summer, coat hanger... Pull that coat hanger out. Listen, pull that coat hanger out and smell it. <laughs> That's worse than, I don't even want to compare it to nothing, right? Okay, Lord, we need your help. Father, would you come and help us today? We, we pray this morning because we're sinners. And we need your help and we're your strength, God. I pray in this morning's message, Lord, that you just use me to open the word of God. And, Lord, that it would be powerful and good. Lord, we're nothing without you. And, Lord, especially when Jesus is teaching, may these words be powerful and great and life-changing. So use a preacher today, Lord. I, I desire to be used by you today. So make it, Lord, what it should be. We'll give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. And we're picking up right where we left off last week. I didn't intend to do that, but in the studying this week, that's just where it was. Last week we did the Lord's Prayer, and then that parable of, of, of persistence, knocking and knocking and knocking. Remember that? Ask and you'll find, seek and it'll be opened. No. Ask and you'll find, seek and it'll be opened. Knock. Yeah, you got it. So you got it better than me. So ask, seek, knock, okay? 
And the verses right before this one is, your father being a good father, hey, if you're acting for, asking for something, he's not going to give you something junky. He's going to give you something good, right? And I went, meant to, well, wanted to go away and find a different parable this week, and I ended up right here, right after that. The Lord is still teaching in word pictures, in word parables. Does that make sense? Several different topics I think we'll hit today, but, but uh, the Lord Jesus is just trying, he's trying, he's trying to get us to get the main kingdom things, the main principles in us, okay? Uh, again, I feel like this world is losing these kingdom ideas. You catching me? Christians are losing the big picture. You with me on all that? Losing the big picture because the world's getting so crazy. Can I do this for you real quick? Just, just take time out for just a second. We knew this, this Middle East thing was going to happen. We knew that these blood moons are out here. We believe by the end of the blood moons next September that Israel will have a peace treaty, will have had war against their neighbors, not just the Palestinians in, in the land of Israel, but against their neighbors like Psalms 83 says. There will be a seven-year, at least a peace treaty. The Antichrist comes later and confirms it for seven years. But there will be a peace treaty where Israel can begin to build a temple. We think that's going to happen in the next 12 months. When the temple comes in, we're really close to the Lord coming back. Have you seen, just to throw something out there if you look at it on the internet, have you seen San Paulo, Brazil, has built a full-size Solomon's temple? It's freaky. Look out there on the internet. I mean, it's like the temple Solomon. It is something. Kim, did you look it up? Did you see it? It's really freaky. San Paulo, Brazil. Now, you might say, think, well, what's the big deal? That's not... Listen, if Brazil's building a temple, you tell me the land of Israel doesn't want to build a temple. Okay? I'm telling you that just to know we're in that time. Okay, here we go. Uh, not back to that subject, but back to the Bible subject. Therefore, whatever you want men to do for you, do also for them, for this is the law and the prophets. This, para this uh, verse is normally called the golden rule. The golden rule. It's this idea that whatever you have expect from others, uh, you ought to be willing to do. That makes sense? Or you should do whatever people expect from you. Or you should do... You get that whole thing? You get that? Uh, can I tell you something right now? People are not taking responsibility for themselves. You catching that whole thing? People want to blame everybody for everything. Really? You getting that whole thing? God doesn't ever let us do that. Everything that ever happens to us is based on something. God works everything together for good. We need to take responsibility for everything that's happening in our lives, right? I talked to a lady after I preached in the first service. And she came to me and she said, I lost losing my thought. She came to me and she said, Mark, that helped me so much because I had expectations of people and I get mad and upset with people all the time. God always puts the responsibility back on us. God never holds, uh, allows us or allows us to justify feeling a certain way because of somebody else's actions. Does that make sense? When you get to heaven, you won't be able to stay there and say, well, so-and-so did this to me, or, or this is my excuse, right? Catching all that? The Lord takes away excuses. When you come to know the Lord, when you come to know the truth, the Lord takes away every excuse. You getting that? There are no excuses before the Lord. You either are going to honor Him with your life, or you're going to do what you want to do. And often in doing what you want to do, you begin to blame people, other people, for issues you have. Catching that? But this verse is saying, you do unto others, let me just read it, whatever you want men, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. Now, let's just think for a minute here. What is it I need in my life? What is it? What is it I need? I need a friend. I need somebody to help me in this area. I, I, need, I need a financial blessing. I need my husband to be nicer to me. I need this. Whatever that is, listen to me. The Bible says, you start doing it. I think there's things that are called just spiritual laws. They call this a golden rule, but it has to do with this sowing and reaping principle, which is a spiritual law. You getting all that? And this is how it works. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Whatever you lack, 
It's generally because God, oh, the, I, I just pretty profound in some of these things. Whatever you lack, it's generally because the Lord is requiring that action to begin to start new in you. There's a, there's a, if I wish I could say this right way, but there's a, there's an absolute, uh, I, I, speaking words beyond my intellect here, there's an absolute relationship between the needs that are in your life and what God is trying to move you into. That make sense? They're, the broken things in your life are there because God's trying to, he, trying to strengthen areas and move you into the ability to, to minister. The things that I, I'll just put it this way. When I was raised as a kid, there's a couple things, couple things in my life my father put into me. One thing was he was a very angry man. My dad, oh my goodness, you talk about somebody losing their temper. We, as kids, we've been hit, been hit by about everything. If my dad had a shovel in his hand, he'd get mad, he'd hit us with a shovel. If he didn't have, he'd kick us. He'd pull his belt off and hit us. It's just, so you learned with dad, if dad's about to get mad, you just stayed out of reach of whatever he had in his hands. You know what I mean? Farther distance you can get from dad when he was getting out. My dad was a good man too at times. and He was saved for a period of time and that was wonderful. But there's just awful temper in him. So I grew up with a temper. Now get this. I grew up a red-headed, freckle-faced, fighting I get in trouble fighting at the bus stop in the morning. I don't know how many times I get in trouble where I wouldn't let me ride on the bus because I'd fight at the bus stop. I know you can't see that in poor little sweet little me. <laughs> but I was, I was a fist throwing guy. I'm just telling you. We just were. We learned it from our dad. My dad, anyhow. So we fought. We fought. I had two brothers. I was the oldest, thank goodness. But we fight. We were just tough kids. We were really tough kids. We got in trouble a lot. The, the, the Hackworth kids were notorious in the neighborhood. You know, Hackworth kids are coming up your driveway. You shut the door. You pull the blinds. You know what I mean? You turn off the, the, the TV and you act like nobody's home. I punched a kid after I felt like he undercut me. Playing basketball one day, I went up for a layup. I, he kind of got under me. I flipped down on my shoulders and the back of my neck and head. I got up mad, punched a guy. I flattened his nose on his face. I mean, a direct kabam. I was probably about 11, 12 years old. I got in the worst trouble of my life. It was at school. So I got in trouble in school. It, my, my parents were always, whatever you got in trouble with school, you got double at home. So whatever happened, we got double at home. And then I, the, the parents of the kid were really mad at me. He was a good friend of mine, awful. I thought the parents were going to press charges on me. They didn't end up pressing charges, but I never, was, I never was allowed to go over the boy's house or nothing again, that's for sure. And through that whole process, the Lord was trying to deal with an anger issue in my life. You get that? And in the middle of that trouble, the middle of that trouble, I went to church one night on a Sunday night, and it, believe it or not, the preacher was preaching just about that. Somebody got up that night at the altar call time, playing a piano, a lady got up and came back the aisle when people were praying at the altar, and came up to me and said, I feel like the Holy Spirit sent me back here to talk to you. Would you come and pray tonight? And I said, oh, no, I'm a Christian already. That's what I told her. That's the best way to get anybody off your back. Just do that, okay? Anybody asking you to respond to the Lord, just say, oh, no, I'm a believer already. It's okay. But I wasn't. And I remember going home that night, that very night, my heart beating out of my chest. I knew I'd just lied to the piano player. Thinking, oh, God, not only am I a fighter, now I'm a liar. And after my parents went to sleep that night, I got out. I came to the Lord beside my bed, asking the Lord, forgive me of all that stuff. I didn't instantly become the perfect child. It took me a week or so to become the perfect child that I am today. <laughs> but the Lord began to convict me of my anger. And even though that anger was still in my home, the Lord began to take that out of me. I don't get angry anymore. 
In fact, I speak in anger issues all the time in people's lives, self-control issues in people's lives. Oh, the Lord, I'm just telling you, the Lord was trying to deal with things in my life because he was trying to take that weakness, that broken thing in my life, and make it something very strong in me. So he had to make it very ugly in my life. Hey, if there's things that have been illuminated in your life and they look really ugly, God, God isn't trying to kill you. He's trying to illuminate those things in your life so that you can be really amazingly strong in those things. You catching that? You don't have to be weak and fall to the devil all the time. The Lord will strengthen you in those broken things in your life. Right? Well, that's what the Lord does. What do you think God's, God's trying to work on kind of like in a surgery on you in spiritual ways? He's trying to take all those broken things and heal them up and make them... Well, listen, if there's... There, there's there's abuse that's happened or, or, or unforgiveness. Or all, God wants to heal that. God doesn't want you to hang on that stuff forever. There's a lady who came to me after the church in the first service, and she talked about being in a seven-year lawsuit with her brother over some estate issues. And she said the Lord has convicted her about just giving up on that, just quit, just not fight going to court with her brother anymore. Quit that, quit that, quit that. But because her brother was a person that would waste everything he ever got, and she didn't want her, her family stuff wasted. She fought against that, fought against that. And I finally told her, listen, if you know the Lord's convicting you of just giving up on something, quit justifying what you want to do. Therefore, whatever, I love those two words together. Therefore, so, whatever, not whatever, what, whatever, meaning whatever your issue is, you want somebody to do for you, you do it for them. Well, I don't have any friends at the church. You know what that means? You need to start being a friend. Well, nobody will call me. You know what that means? You need to start calling people. I was proud of Vicki, Dave. Is she here today? No, okay, I'm not proud of her. Vicky sometimes complains about those things. Yesterday, you guys hosted a, a, a little lunch or a little dinner there at the park, and that was good, right? Vicky has a need to have some friends. You know what? She hosted a little thing yesterday, and it was beautiful, wonderful. It was good. Y'all hear me? Whatever it is that's broken in your life, begin to do it. I tell people that don't have work, tell them this all the time. It happens all the time. Listen, if you'll just come and start working with me, volunteering, working with me, you'll have work. Because the thing that you need in your life, if you need work, if you'll just give it away, you'll receive it. The worst thing you can do is just sit at home waiting for the phone to ring. No, start giving away work. You catch that whole thing? If you have, I don't care what it is, if you have a broken marriage, start, being, start looking at yourself really hard, really hard to get that thing. Now, you can't fix the other guy, and if he's broken, he's broken. You know what I mean? But you can be the best you can be. You get that? So this golden rule thing, listen, don't have expectations of people that they're going to do something for you that you would never, ever even think about doing for them. As a pastor, I run into that a lot. Listen to me, I'm just trying to, maybe this is too personal, maybe I shouldn't say this, but people have an expectation of me often that's way beyond what anybody would ever think about doing for someone else. You get that whole thing? You see somebody in need, go, go. That makes sense? You see a need, go. You see somebody hurting, go. We got the babies going, don't we? <laughs> Catch it all at? The golden rule. Hey, do unto others that they, you want them to do unto you. Hey, how about living by that? That's a Christian principle. I'm just telling you, it begins to start something in the spiritual realm. Get the motor rolling. Get the ball rolling. Get the thing going in your life. Get that spiritual thing going. It ought to be going. Don't just sit and do nothing. Get something spiritual moving in your life. Begin to sow something. Get something flowing. Get something going. Start to bless, start to move, start to give, start to love, start to call, start to care. You get that going, that's a very contagious thing. It's a very contagious thing. There's a, you ever heard of John Maxwell? He has a, a beautiful tape, wonderful tape out there, and it's entitled, Five Things I Know About People. But one thing he says there is what he knows about everybody who likes to feel loved. 
Everybody likes to feel cared for. And if you begin to care for somebody, generally as they get healthy, they begin to care for somebody. There, there should be an exponential thing that goes on in the church until people begin to draw back and say, it's all about me. In that point, God doesn't bless anything. Does that make sense? But if you begin to sow something, if you begin to do something, if you begin to move, you begin to get that supernatural ball rolling, that, that faith ball rolling that, that, that causes beautiful things to begin to occur, and it's, it's beautiful. Catching that? It just happens that way. I could go on and on and on and on with you. Uh, I was talking to Bev this morning. I, Bev gave me a lawnmower this week. or She has a lawnmower. She didn't give it to me. She has a lawnmower. It's broken. The engine's locked. The piston's locked up in it. You know? And uh, Bev's a good-hearted person. Bev, in fact, let me, can I tell you the whole thing about her? Let me tell you about her. Bev Gleason right here. Picking on Bev for just a minute. Bev has been knitting baby blankets for every new baby that comes in our church. You catching that? She handed me one today because our daughter-in-law... Is, is going to have a little baby girl coming up here. We got a second one coming. Okay, which is awesome. But um, she handed me a baby blanket today. At the same time, I said, Bev, you gave me a lawnmower this week, or a couple weeks ago, that the engine was locked up in it. Well, I'd been praying, Lord, just help me bless, 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 Bev, bless, 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 bless. I take that motor part and just try to get penetrating oil down in that piston so it can go, and, and it just won't go. It just, you know what happened this week? She's out here knitting a baby, baby blanket. I'm having trouble with bees today. A baby, baby blanket. Knitting baby blankets. I quit it for, her, for us. The very time she did something for me, yesterday or two days ago, somebody gave me a lawnmower that was the exact lawnmower as hers. I told her, Bev, somebody gave me your exact mower. I got the exact motor. I'm going to put it on your lawnmower. I'm gonna, it's a blessing. God doing something. At the very same time, she's handing me a baby blanket. Saying, I say, who's this for? It's for your, your daughter-in-law, your, your girl. Really? Bev, I've been trying to work on you. You've been trying to work on me. Thank you. You catching all that? There, there is so much beauty and wonderful talent in this church. I think you get to see it. I think an example of it is before you every Sunday when you see these guys sing and play. Isn't there some pretty talented people on this platform, you know? In this church, it's not just on this platform. You can look up here and see these guys pretty talented up here, right? I look beyond that and look in this congregation and say, there's awful talented people in this congregation. There's some awful, wonderful people in this congregation. Hey, but if you lack something, God isn't trying to kill you. God's trying to get something stirred up in you. The very trouble that you're having, God bet you somebody else is having that trouble in the church. That makes sense? So, call. Do something. But don't just be a Christian that does nothing. You're supposed to be a, a Christian, supposed to be a, a, a world changer. It's supposed to start with the world that's around you. You getting that whole thing? The world around you is supposed to be changing. Where you work is supposed to be changing. Don't be that person that just blends into the average, blends into the crowd, becomes like everybody else. Right? No. I, I, think, you, I think you know enough about me to know wherever I've ever been in my whole life, Hey, I've tried to be a Christian there. I've tried to stand out there. It makes sense? I, can I tell you something? I'm, I was in a squadron of 800 people in the military, a very intense electronic training school in Biloxi, Mississippi, for a year and a half. Hey, and I lived my Christian faith where people were in my dorm room asking, them, asking Lord Jesus to come into their heart. You know what happened to me there? Listen to this. I became the airman of the year at, Christ, uh, Christ, at Keesler Air Force Base. I moved to a company, a company called Systems Research Laboratories. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? I worked hard there, prayed with everybody I could, 
worked in that, just worked in that place, had tried to have Bible studies when I could, all that kind of stuff. Five years at that company, I became the employee of the year at that company. Moved on to the next place. I moved up to the very top management in that company. I can't get any big work. But the Lord just moved me to the very top in the management of that company. And the Lord used me every day to speak Jesus into people's lives. You catching that whole thing? Now I pastor a church. I'm just a big loser at the church I'm at. <laughs> just kidding. But listen to me. One thing I've known since I was a little kid, the Lord didn't save me for me to be average. I'm not hiding my light under a bushel. I'm, not, I'm a city sit on a hill. You know? I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the, I'm the world changer. The world needs it. So if I, if I, whatever I need, whatever, whatever needs to happen, let me sow that so that I get a spiritual thing going around me where there's lives changing and things happening and it's going and flowing and moving like God always wanted it to be. But it starts by faith. I know this sounds awful, and I'm not a guy that usually preaches anything about money. But I've, I've heard too many stories and been in it myself. If you're struggling financially, give. Listen, if you think the church wants it, I, I, look, I'm not interested in getting your money. Give it to somebody that needs it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get you to sow money. I mean, we have lights and bills and stuff here, but, but my, my point is, just so give to somebody. Just as the Lord leads you, give, and I guarantee to you, God will bless that beyond what you can imagine. You catching that? Don't get, it's almost like this verse is trying to get us out of something. The devil's trying, devil's trying to get us a victim in the middle of a problem when the Lord's trying to set us free from those things that hold us back. You catching that whole thing? Are you missing me or not? You catching me? Dave, you catching me back there? So whatever it is you need, start doing it. I lost my dad a whole bunch of years ago. At one point I said, Dad, I, Lord, I need a dad in my life. You know what the Lord spoke to me? You start being a dad. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All that need to have a dad, all of a sudden I started being a dad, and all of a sudden I wasn't worried about having a dad. I was worried about being a dad. All of a sudden I've just spoken into young men's life my just over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Does that make sense? And the Lord took away from me that whole desire that I needed something and began to say, Listen, you don't need it, I will make you it. Does that make sense? You're going to be that for others. Sometimes the Lord changes our desire as we begin to ask Him, Lord, what do I do in this situation I'm in? I'm not going to lay here and cry. I'm not going to lay here and be a victim anymore. I want to move, Lord. I want to move, Lord. I want to move. Next verse. Enter by the narrow gate, the Scripture says. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. I got this picture here yesterday. I found this picture. I don't know if all you can see it. We throw these pictures up here. I don't mean to block anybody's view. But I found this picture of this narrow passageway. I felt like, man, a fat person can't even get through that. Narrow passageway. But what I loved about this picture was... I used to, on the other side of that thing, I don't know if you can see through that thing... It opens up into this great big valley. That narrow passageway opens up into this great expanse of valley and mountains. And Let me read on just a minute. Go on here. Next verse. No, next verse. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. Listen, go back to that last picture, guys. Betty, is that you? Go back to that narrow air. Look at this. Look at that picture. Look at this. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to what? 
all you Christians in here, you know what? Narrow and difficult is our way. But what's it open up into? It opens up into the kingdom. It opens up into God. Eye is not seen and ear is not heard. The things that God has, has prepared for those who love him. Listen, that narrow gate and those difficult things bring us to, to life. Bring us to the place where we live. Don't ever, as a Christian, don't ever run away from the hard things God's calling you to. Don't ever, don't ever compromise the things that you're supposed to do. Walk that, walk the Christian way, the narrow, difficult way, because it opens up to life. You want to live? Live a narrow, difficult life. Live for the Lord with all of your might. It'll open up into things you've never, the beauty of things you've never seen before. You believe me? You want to live? Live that narrow, difficult life. I know people, this sounds funny, but I know people that say, listen, I don't even like people. Well, it's really, I just want you to know, it's hard to do the Christian thing you're supposed to do when you don't. Here's people. I just want you to know something about people, okay? I'm in the people business. I, I hate to call it a business because it's not a business. People are tough. Right now in our church, just, just to lay some things out for you. Right now in our church, there's four women that have cancer. Last week, and even this morning I heard, last week several people lost their parents. There's a man in our church right now that has esophagus cancer right where it touches his stomach. And the report that he got this last week is it spread out of his esophagus. And now they're really, they're really nervous about it because it's... Diane up there says that she had, what did you have this week? Radiation this week? She said she got to the place where swallowing this week was just awful, right? Didn't you tell me that? Swallowing was just, ugh. We got people running around here wearing wigs. She's wearing a bandana in her hair. Have you lost some hair, sis? You lost all your hair? We got people running around with no hair. We got a man that, I mean, literally believes, listen, unless the Lord tells you, he's not going to live. We got people that don't have places to live. We got people that, that just all kinds of stuff. It's di listen, if you're going to be the Christian person you're supposed to be, people are going to be difficult. So the best thing to do, the best thing to do is just stay away from people because then you don't have to deal with difficult things. Can I tell you, I just want, Jamie, you're going to kill me. I saw her come in here. Sis, where are you? She went back out. What's wrong with her? Something's happening. What? She talking to somebody? That's okay. My wife had a dream this past week. Actually, she's had two. Well, my wife's having dreams. Watch out. She had a dream about us, about a mountain or a steep hillside. And out of this steep hillside was coming these white butterflies just flowing out of this mountainside, just flowing. And she gets up like, like she always does, and she said, Mark, what's that mean? I know it was spiritual. I know, what's that mean? And I, being so spiritual like I am, I always say, I don't know. <laughs> she said, I got to figure out what that means. She found somebody in Canada, that, uh, a Pentecostal couple in Canada, Canada that interprets dreams. She wrote that little vision to him, didn't tell him anything about who we were or what we do. And the guy wrote back and said, listen, a mountain is something that God has established, something that God's doing something with you. God's established something with you. If it's a mountain, God's already established something. But those white butterflies coming out, butterflies come out a little, what do they come out of? Cocoons. And the fact that you're starting to see white butterflies coming out of those cocoons, I mean, the Lord is starting to change those ones you've worked with for years. He's starting to turn them out of them cocoons into the beautiful things that are supposed to be white and pure and fly. He said, I don't, I don't know what's going on with you, but that's one of the most exciting dreams I've ever interpreted. That God's already established something in you and, and, and butterflies 
white butterflies are starting to come out of that thing, just starting to flow out of that thing, just starting to flow out of that thing, starting to flow out of that thing. Yeah. It's difficult working with people. It is. Sometimes I don't have answers for all the problems. Sometimes I don't have time for all the things that need to be done. But listen, it's the difficult, narrow thing. It's the things God called us to, the things we need to be focused on. You know what I mean? It isn't the wide gate, the world, the world running after everything, you know? Mark running after all kinds of toys and all kinds of stuff. No, man, the Lord's focused my life down to this narrow walk where i got to stay on what I'm doing. But it opens up into life. It opens up into something beautiful. You hear me? Kevin and I went to a man's house yesterday. He's about a little younger than me, actually. He has every toy under the sun. He's a wealthy man. Wealthy man. And he's looking for the next toy. And he's looking for the next toy. He gave us yesterday, didn't he, Kevin? Something that cost new $75,000. He gave us something yesterday. You want to know why? Because he'd bought a newer and nicer one. And he gave the church something very valuable yesterday. At 30 years old, I was a man that had everything paid for in my life, was doing great financially, had 17 rental properties, was doing great. But the Lord began to deal with me about What's it all about? What's it for? And the Lord took me away from being very selfish and very much into myself and very much looking at the next toy I could buy and the next thing I could do. I, I don't even want to preach this. I'm just, let me stop for a minute. I don't want to preach this stuff. I just feel like I need to today. I'm trying to just talk to you about the fights that I've had in me. Not that I'm some great person. I'm not no great person. No different than you. Instead of shopping for the next toy I could buy, Lord called me into people, called me into difficult things, called me into selling stuff, called me into investing in a church, called me into investing in things, you know what I mean? Started giving them a set, you know what I mean? And my life got much more complicated. Susie, your life's going to get very complicated. You know that, don't you? Just graduated with a social work degree and wants to use it for the Lord and is going to be working with people. Complicated, difficult people. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't lose me. Don't lose it. Don't lose. Please don't lose me. I'm telling you something very powerful. Difficult things. Working with a group of men right now. Right now in our church, there are, there are more marriages split up than, than we've ever had. More couples split up than we've ever had. Working with some of those men. <sighs> Woo. I'm making a joke there. Love them all. Love them all. Recognizing we got flaws in our life. Recognizing our wives are the greatest, how can you say this, our greatest critics in our life. You know, the greatest one. If anybody's going to detect our flaws, it's going to be our wives. You get that whole thing? And they're going to blow them up and do a big, big deal. You know what that means? Because God is trying to get a hold of our big problems, get a hold of our flaws. And our wives will sure point them out. And, and they'll get serious enough about it. They're not going to put up with it no more. Catching that whole thing? Everybody? So guess what? God lets everything break because God is trying to get us to be different. That whole potter and the wheel thing, you know that whole thing? If the, if the vessel that the potter is trying to make has a fall in it, he has every right in the world to crush that thing back down to nothing. You get it? Some of us have flaws, and I don't even know why I'm saying some of this. I, I just pray the Holy Spirit's using me. I, I don't, didn't plan to go this way, haven't talked like this, haven't told these stories in years. Some of us have flaws in it, and you know what we're trying to do? We're trying to just get by again. We're trying to just get by again. We're trying to just get by again. we got these flaws in our life, and we're just trying to get by again. Listen, and your pastor and people are trying to say, no, 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 because if you just keep getting by, that flaw will still be there. You catching that? And what the Lord's moving towards is for the thing to break. Because God is trying to take that very imperfect person in you and me, and he's trying to make us into somebody who more, looks more like Jesus. Am I preaching too hard?
I didn't know that was there. Your husband will drive you crazy. But guess what? He's working on something in you. God will use the people very close to you, the ones you get the very maddest at, to point out those very things that you don't want. And so you hit that mad button. You know what I mean? Hello? Hello, 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 hello. But if God can get your life narrowed down to his purpose for your life, it opens up into something that's kingdom and beautiful. That makes sense? You get that whole thing? God doesn't want you to be everything for everybody and be chasing everything you ever wanted and into your whole flesh and into all this. Listen, you can't be and do all that. God wants to narrow you down to a very, very specific, difficult thing that he's called you to do. He wants you to do it with all of your might. Hey, and that opens up into beautiful things. It opens up into butterflies. Anybody hear me? Anybody getting that? Is that too hard? Anybody want butterflies? <laughs> Heck yeah, we want butterflies. Am I allowed to say that? Put that, put that. Here's the mass of people. Listen, the next screen, I think, is this the next, next verse here, Colin, please? No, no, no. I'm, go back. I'm, I'm off. Sorry. Back one. Back one verse. I'm just going to read it. Whatever you want men to do for you, you do to them also. That was where we started. Next verse. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to destruction. There it is. Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Sorry, Colin. I had you in the right place and told you to move. Just, just for a second. Just stop for just a second. Do you realize that the masses of people in the world don't know Jesus, don't care about knowing Jesus? They're just chasing the world. You, everybody hear me? They're not living a life of purpose. They're living a life for selfish. You catching that whole thing? Hello, 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 hello. Wait, wait, you catching that? But you, you have been translated out of the darkness into his marvelous light. You, the Lord Jesus has spoken to you. You stand today, you sit today in a church, and the word of God is being, you're special, you're unique. You're not supposed to be like the world. I'm trying to beg and plead with you, don't be like the world. Because that gate's wide, and there are many that go, but that causes destruction. Where this world's going, where the political correctness of this world is going, is going to destroy us. Y'all hearing me? But that narrow gate that's difficult brings life. I'm 50 years old. If I squeeze 20 more years out, as healthy as I eat, I may barely get there. Hey, I better have done the things the Lord asked me to do. If you're young in this place, if you're a young person in this place, say, oh, I got plenty of time. Let me tell you something. That Them years pass like crazy. The greatest thing you could ever do is just start serving the Lord with the life that has purpose in it and beauty and greatness in it is a life living for Jesus. And there are many, the way leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Next verse. I'm not getting preaching. Yeah, telling too many stories. Narrow is the gate and difficult the way that leads to life. And there are few that find it. Hey. I'm doing it. I'm going to go that narrow gate. I don't know about you. Can I even tell you? Let me tell you that. Let me do it this way. Big famous thing that Joshua said at the end of his book. You know what it is? Everybody know what it is? You probably have it on your door at home. For me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. That's what he said. Now, let me tell you the context for that whole thing. He had been with them when they left Egypt. You catch that whole thing? In that whole desert, whole generation died because they were murmurers, complainers, gripers, stiff-necked, disobedient people. You get that whole thing? He came through all that. He would had a new generation. He led them into the promised land. God did what he promised he was going to do. He gave them the land. They, they were blessed, and God gave them this great land, the land of milk and honey. Now, get this. At the end of Joshua's life, 
he sees them starting to go away from God hard. They start getting into selfish things again. They start getting into their toys and getting into, they have all this stuff going on. And Joshua's statement is really, let me, can I do it Mark, kind of Mark's translation? Joshua, the last time he addresses the people, says this. He said, I don't know what you guys are thinking. And I don't know where you're going. I'm a little bit disappointed that you've seen the Lord do these great things, and now you're drifting away from him. And then he says this great thing we put on our door. He says, but for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. But he's looking at a people saying, I don't know what's happening to you guys. I look at America and I say, I don't know what's happening in America. I don't know what's happening to you. I look at some Christians and say, I don't know what's going on with you. But for you and your house, you've got to serve the Lord. I can't let my kids run like the world either. I'm, I just have a, I don't know. I guess I, I've had some dreams where the Lord's, I don't know, just something in me to talk to parents about not letting their kids have the values of the world or run like the world or the toys of the world or the stuff of the world because they're right in your home and you're putting a love for worldly things in them. Put a love for godly things in them. When we were growing, I just, can I just talk of old-fashioned days, old time, dinosaur days? Our parents sent us to church camps. We send our kids to sports camps. Got real quiet, didn't it? We let our kids run and do, listen, listen I, I want to teach my kids how to work and how special they are and try to get them to understand what their gifting is so they can walk in that thing that God has created them to be. I don't want them chasing the whole world. At this point, I don't really want them running off to college too far from me. Does that make sense? I want my kids to know there's a specific God-given ability the Lord put in them, and it's supposed to be used for Him. Does that make sense? Well, I don't care if it's in a secular work job. It doesn't matter to me where it is or the whole thing. But there's something in them that God put in that they're supposed to use for Him, and it's narrow, and the work will be difficult. Hey, I teach my kids all the time. We work first and play later. That's what we do. Does that make sense? The issue is they want to play a lot more than they work, but it's not that way. We work more than we play, right? Try to teach our kids that. You know the video game? I, I don't even get in that whole thing. I, I used to know the statistics of this, but Grand Theft Auto, the latest one to come out that has cussing, prostitution, all kinds of stuff in it, was the biggest, fastest selling video game. It just came out. I don't know how long ago. It, it sold out in just a matter of millions or billions of, of, of units. That game got sold in America that fast. You know what that said to me? Parents are letting their kids just buy anything and play it on a video game. I think it's got an R rating on it. I think the video game itself has an R rating on it. Uh oh. Am I in trouble? This sign, do you see that sign? Can everybody see that? That sign's in front of all of us. The Bible says, narrow gate, difficult way, leads to life. If we don't teach our kids that, guess which way they go? <laughs> the easy way, the path of least resistance. Am I hurting you? Are you okay? You got real quiet on me. I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. I love your kids. I'm not trying to be a, a nosy grandpa. Next, next, next. Hurry and hurry it. Beware of false prophets that come to you in sheep's sleep, clothing. That's a pretty good picture. You see that picture? I'll just cover the pictures until here to the end. 
There are people that look like sheep. Now, we're about to get into this whole thing with fruit real quick. I'm just going to read because time's getting about fruit. There are people that look Christian on the outside. We're going to read a big section of Scripture about that. Go. Next verse. You will know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? No, the answer is next. Even so, a good tree bears good fruit, but bad trees bear bad fruit. That picture up there, I love that picture. A good tree can't bear bad fruit. Next. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Everybody get that whole thing? Jesus talking in parables again here. You getting that whole thing? I'm trying to talk to my kids about this. Let me just... This is what I know. You can look whatever you want to look like on the outside. But your fruit is either going to be good or it's going to be bad. And it doesn't matter what the wolf in sheep's clothing looks like. It doesn't matter what, what he's trying to say is that good people do good things. I'm trying to teach my kids. If, you're doing, if you have a good heart, you're doing good things. When I see or hear of kids that do bad things, that's, I know they're not, they may stand to me in front of me all pretty. Hey, but their heart is not, isn't, isn't pretty. Does that make sense? If your parents are dealing with kids and their fruit is ugly, that means their heart is also ugly. That makes, I'm not trying to be so mean, but you need to deal with heart issues with your kids. I love to see my kids do things when I, when they don't know I'm there. I hate to pick on my one boy, but he come flying in our driveway the other day. He didn't think I was home. Come whipping the car in there, just this radio going and whipping just like. Now, I guarantee if Jamie and I were sitting out at the picnic table, we come in real gentle and all Christian music. Just. <laughs> but as soon as he come whipping in there, I step out the door and all of a sudden, ooh. <laughs> Listen to me. It's very, what he's trying to say is, you can look good on the outside, but if your fruit is something else, I, can I just proclaim, I just want to proclaim this. The Lord sees you all the time. The Lord's watching all the time. You ain't hiding nothing from him. If you're trying to hide stuff from people, you're missing the one who, who, who matters the most. Everybody get that? Am I in trouble? I feel like all of a sudden I got in trouble. I feel like every mom right now is really mad at me. Is every mom in here mad at me? Did I get too? Dads, they're okay. I'm sure they're okay with me. Moms, I'm like, I see moms going. <laughs> Your kids can't do bad things, and you think they have a good heart. You've got to deal with a heart issue. There's something broken in their hearts. There's something not godly in their hearts. That makes sense? Because if they had a godly heart, they would not be doing evil things. You know what I mean? And the same thing for adults. Right? Time, my time's up. I can get to the part I wanted to get to. I said some things to you today. Listen to me. I said some things today to you I did not intend to come here and say. I did not intend to do that. I didn't intend to preach to you about your kids. I didn't intend to be so hard on you. But I feel like maybe that's what the Holy Spirit wanted me to say today. And because I'm out of time, I'm just going to quit. I'm not going to. But that chapter is an amazing chapter. Kingdom things. Kingdom things. Lord, thanks for time together today. Man, I preach. Is there stuff in the balance, Lord? God, you don't usually have me preach this way unless there's stuff in the balance. God, come. Lord Jesus, come. I pray for every cancer person in this church. That God, you're greater than cancer. The cancer cells die in your presence. God, touch cancer here. Heal cancer here. I pray for broken marriages, Lord, in this place. God, may the root issue that selfishness be defeated. And may love flow again. Would you cause hardened hearts, Lord, hardened hearts to be made soft again. 
Would you cause forgiveness to come and brokenness to come? Lord, genuine repentance to come. A true desire to have change. In Jesus' name. God, would you minister to our children? As parents, Lord, would you cause us to look again at what we prioritize in our children's lives? God, would you save our children? Would you give us great wisdom, Lord, in how to raise them? Would you give us love and the ability to correct God, just like you do from your heart, from your throne, you do it from up there, God. Would you give us wisdom to do it here? And would you cause us all, Lord, to be trees that produce good fruit? May what we present ourselves to be, Lord, not be a lie. But, Lord, may we be genuine all the way through on Monday not just Sunday. And God, would you touch our church today? God, minister into broken things. Bring healing, life. Cause us to choose the narrow, difficult things, Lord, that open up into life that we might live for you. Thanks for time together today, Lord. Touch the word. I feel like there's things in the balance. Touch the word. Touch those things in the balance, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks for coming. Pray you come back and see me real soon. I'll try to get all the way through next time, okay?